let's talk gothic fantasy. Hey everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be focusing specifically on gothic fantasy book recommendations. So you may be wondering, what exactly is gothic fantasy? Maybe you've like heard the term just thrown around. There's also gothic horror, which I'm going to include in the gothic fantasy if the horror has any kind of like fantastical elements. And I'm just going to go through a bunch of books, some I've read, some I haven't read, and just talk about if you are looking for gothic modern books, this is a good place to start, hopefully. So if you don't know, gothic literature is a type of literature that emerged in the 18th century in Europe. Think about Mary Shelley, Frankenstein, Picture of Dorian Gray, Dracula, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Rebecca, Jane Eyre, those kinds of books. And continuing today, we still have people that write in this subgenre, this style, and I found this really good article on Book Riot that I'm going to read to you about what kind of are the hallmarks of the modern gothic fantasy fiction genre. So gothic fantasy tends to be grittier, bloodier, more shadowy, and creepier than your usual fantasy novel. Gothic fantasy includes many of the key elements of gothic fiction and gothic horror only with a fantastical bent. Take the rundown country manor, combined with a bleak foreboding environment, add a dreadful atmosphere, throw in some high emotions and passions, and add a dash of magic and you've got a recipe for gothic fantasy. So today I'm going to be recommending books that do exactly what that says. And I will link that article from Book Riot down below because I just think it's a really good read. So each book, I'll be obviously talking about the plot and then talk a little bit about why I think it is a gothic fantasy. So first, let's talk about some that fall in the gothic horror fantasy kind of mixture. And for this one, I'm going to start with The Death of Jane Lawrence by Caitlin Starling. I haven't read it, so I don't know if it actually has fantasy elements or if it's just plain horror, but usually horror has fantasy in it. So I'm going to include it on this list. Take it with a grain of salt. So we have Jane and she's kind of decided that the best way to move forward in her life and kind of maintain some of her independence is to find a husband that will let her do what she wants. So she marries this reclusive doctor named Augustine and he agrees with one condition that she must never visit Lindridge Hall. Then an accident kind of strands her on his door and she ends up in this hall and at night he's like a completely different man. He is kind of like racked with paranoia and seemingly chased by nightmares and he fears that Jane is a ghost come to haunt him, but then in the morning, he's completely fine. So obviously this like manner where things are kind of going wrong has that haunted house gothic vibe, and seemingly there is some fantasy elements in this as well. So next is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is a longtime favorite of mine. You guys should not be surprised that it's on this list. It literally says gothic in the title. So <laughs> um, yeah, this is the book that kind of started my obsession with gothic horror in specific but I love this book so much and it really got me into horror in general. So we follow Noemi. She is living in 1950s Mexico City and she is a socialite. She you know spends her days going to school and then nights going out and being a bit of a party girl and then she gets this letter from her cousin who has married an Englishman and moved to this like country manor and in the letter, her cousin is acting like she's like completely distressed and something is very, very wrong. So Noemi drops everything to go to this country estate and tend to her cousin. And once she's there, she finds like a very hostile environment, especially because her cousin's husband and her, his family is English in the Mexican countryside. And she also begins to kind of feel like she's being haunted by, by the house itself with these just like really vivid and strange nightmares and always feeling like she's being watched. And she may soon find it to be too late to save her cousin or to escape this place. It's so good. I mean, obviously it has like the crumbling manner, the like feeling of foreboding. It is just absolutely perfect and I'm obsessed with it. So honestly, in a similar vein, La Hacienda by Isabel Cañas. Um, I'm actually in the middle of reading this one now and oh my god it's different than Mexican Gothic but still love it so much. So we're following Beatrice and this is post um, Mexican War of Independence and her father has kind of 
been killed as a traitor in this war so she marries this guy that can give her security because as being a traitor general's daughter like she's not like a hot pick on the market and she kind of ignores the fact that he has a first wife that died under mysterious circumstances so that's kind of how they end up paired in marriage so she goes to hacienda san isodro in the mexican countryside and she just really starts to be like plagued by all of these horrors inside of this house especially her husband leaves to go back to the city and like none of the other family members will stay in the house itself they stay like in the surrounding properties and there's just something like so terribly wrong with this house and no one in the family will help her the only person that she can find help with is this priest that's hot so yeah um it is gothic it is terrifying there's definitely a little bit of a fantasy spooky element in here and i'm obsessed with it so far we have All the Dead Lie Down by Kyrie McCauley, and this is a really cool cover. So there's a tragedy that leaves Marin Blythe all alone in the world, and she receives this invitation from her mother's friend Alice, who is a childhood horror story author. Alice offers her a position as a nanny in their coastal main house, and Marin begins tending to these little girls and they're very strange. One of them just like buries all of her dolls and hosts funerals and the other one will do anything to drive her away. Then the eldest daughter returns and Marin finds herself very drawn to her. And all is not well in Lovely's house and Marin must unravel the secrets before it's too late. So definitely has that horror kind of spooky gothic element. Next is Starling House by Alex E. Harrow which is coming out soon. Hopefully I can go to her book signing. I'm so excited. And... It's about a spooky house. This one also, I just want to say, has a really cool pre-order benefit where you can get this like keychain. I'll put a little graphic of it up here, but definitely submit your pre-order receipt. I love pre-order goodies. Eating Kentucky is kind of like this decrepit small town and it's known for housing this famous 19th century author that wrote The Underland and then vanished. But before she vanished, Starling House appeared. Everyone kind of knows to leave the house and its last heir, Arthur Starling, alone, but Opal gets a job opportunity there and she can't really pass it up. Too quickly though, the house becomes very dangerous and Opal and Arthur have to choose if they're going to dig into the past or let the town be consumed by nightmares. I mean, Alexi Harrow just has beautiful writing. I haven't read any of her books yet though. I did, like, I have read snippets of her work. I do want to read more and I am going to try to read some of her books before I go to the book signing because I, I need to do that. Come on, like, I need to read something before I go to the signing. But I already know that I love her. So I'm excited and this just seems perfect. Next we have A Multitude of Dreams by Mara Rutherford. I am going to pick this one up soon, but it is in Edgar Allan Poe retelling, which if you know Edgar Allan Poe, like, that man is gothic to his core or he was at least like he is gothic literature so edgar Allan poe retelling easy check mark on the gothic literature like you know you're in for a gothic story this book is specifically a retelling of edgar Allan poe's the mask of red death which is a short story so i would probably read the short story before i pick up the book because it's short so the bloody plague is finally passed and we have Princess Imogen who has kind of lived a sheltered life during this plague in a boarded up castle. But she has a secret and as King Stuart descends further into madness every day it is in danger of being revealed. And then we also have Nico whose whole family died in the plague but has survived on the generosity of a nearby lord that sends him to the castle to search for other plague survivors and there he bumps into Princess Imogen who wants to break out and they have to each navigate the thread of lies that they've woven if they want to survive. So I mean Edgar Allan Poe retelling automatically gothic. This next one has also really been catching my eye lately and that is Anatomy A Love Story by Dana Schwartz. And this again I don't know if it's fantasy but it's historical historical YA so forgive me if it doesn't really fit on this list I'm still going to include it. So in Edinburgh 1817 we have Hazel who is a lady and she wants to be a surgeon and then we have Jack who is a resurrection man which if you don't know who the resurrection men are I highly recommend the book um, Ice Pick Surgeon by Sam Keen which is a nonfiction that goes into like the ethics of medicine discoveries and it's just like his books are written in like a very fun and approachable way so I really enjoy that so that's just like a side note but that has a whole like talks a lot about the resurrection men and is kind of how I learned about them 
Anyways, so Hazel gets kicked out of this like renowned surgeon's lectures because she's a woman. So she enlists the help of Jack because she made a deal with the professor if she can just pass the medical exams on her own then she'll be a doctor but obviously she needs to practice so yeah that just sounds really really cool it's a duology and i think the like cover design is stunning another gothic book that is a favorite of mine that has similar vibes to that is stalking jack the ripper by carrie maniscalco i love this series this is again historical ya with like a touch of fantasy oh Oh, I don't know where I got that from, but it's there. Okay, so <clears throat> we follow Audrey Rose Wadsworth. She is a lady, but she's more interested in studying science and forensics than she is like actually being a society lady. So she gets drawn into the investigation of the infamous case of Jack the Ripper and there she works like as an apprentice under her uncle and we also have fellow apprentice Thomas and they kind of butt heads and I love them so much. This is honestly like ugh, such a good spooky gothic read and I love the series so much. What am I gonna do? All these authors have more books. I'm not gonna be able to fit them all on the shelf. All right, now we have a YA spooky read and that is Lakeside by Lindell Eclipso, which this cover is so freaking like show-stopping. It's beautiful. And then the sequel, Forest Fall. I've read this one, haven't read this one, but I really liked this one. So we follow Violetta or Letta and she will kind of do anything to take care of her brother. And there is this manor in their village that no one will really go near because the rumor is that the son, Rowan, murdered his entire family. And basically Letta's younger brother has this like forbidden shadow magic and Rowan offers to shelter them at his manor instead of turning them in. And after they move in, Letta soon learns that Rowan is bound to the Lord Under, who is like a death god who lurks in the waters of the lake and Rowan is like desperate to get out from under his thumb. So again, it has this like lakeside manor storyline with just like the spooky house, the death god, it, I mean, this cover is like true gothic. All right, next we have Gallant by V.E. Schwab. Interestingly enough, like the size of this book is so cute and I don't know why they decided to do it, but I love it. This is YA, but I really would consider this like more on the middle grade side because um, it is very young YA. But anyways, we follow Olivia Pryor and she is mute and all she has of her mother is this journal and she's like in an orphanage and then she gets a letter to come back home to Gallant. The one place that her mother's journal warns her to never go. And in this manner, there is a garden, and in the garden, there is a door that she must never open. And no one at Gallant sent Olivia that letter, and no one like really knows what's happening. And oh, it was so creepy and good. And again, we have the whole like haunted manor type situation going with like the spooky atmosphere. So this book also has illustrations. Like, do you see that? Ugh. I loved this honestly it's a really great just like spooky season read in general I mean ugh, beautiful and the back says everything casts a shadow even the world we live in next we have a dowry of blood by S.T. Gibson this book was originally independently published and then got picked up by Red Hook um, who I think is under Tor um, and this is about the wives of Dracula which Dracula is one of the main gothic books so yes this is gothic and it's about Constanza and she is the first bride of Dracula and it's kind of like told in the form of letters and it's about her having to navigate this marriage as well as with the other wives of Dracula it's also very interesting because it's like told I think from her writing to Dracula so there's like a lot of um using the word like you and stuff like that so an interesting kind of prose style and I'm very intrigued to dive into this one. These next two books have made an appearance on my September TBR and I hope to read them this week even. Um, the first is Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed and this is a retelling of the Juniper tree by the Grimm brothers so it's like a dark very dark apparently it has cannibalism is like a trigger warning just putting that out there 
It says, a gruesome curse, a city is in upheaval, a monster with unquenchable appetites. So we have Mar Lynchin and her two sisters, and they kind of live with their father, who is some sort of like magical man, and they have magic, and they kind of run this apothecary, but it's kind of seen as like kitschy and like, um, like kind of outdated, like as the city goes more towards technology. And the father kind of keeps the daughters sequestered from the outside world but at night they sneak out to like the ballet and to experience the city and it says and while the city flourishes with culture and bustles with enterprise a monster lurks in its midst born of intolerance and resentment and suffused with old world power i've heard nothing but great things about this book and i'm excited to read it and i just like know once i read ava reed's works because i also have just recently got a study in drowning i know i'm going to be obsessed with her Next is House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson. Look at this beautiful cover. Um, <clears throat> it says, Wanted, blood made of exceptional taste, must have a keen proclivity for life's finer pleasures. Girls of weak will need not apply. So we have Marianne Shaw and she sees an ad to be a blood maiden and in this world the rich drink blood. And so she goes and she gets drawn into the orbit of um, Countess Lisavette and she is, you know, becomes the favored blood maiden. She soon discovers that the ancient walls of the House of Hunger hide ancient secrets, and she kind of gets drawn into this game of cat and mouse. So, yes. Gothic. All right, now we have The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten, and look at this, like, stained glass map. I think that's so beautiful. So we have Lore, and she has the power to raise the dead, and it plunges her into the world of the Sainted King's court. So she gets captured, and she thought she's going to be executed because she has this like rare death magic, but instead the king is like, hey, I need you to figure out what's like going on with your death magic with all these like villages that are dying seemingly overnight. And the king suspects that his heir is behind it. So it's like court politics, but also like gothic setting. Look at this cover. This is the Barnes & Noble edition. Love it. So we have House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig, which is somewhere in my room I, that I cannot find. Um, but I do want to focus more on the sequel, House of Roots and Ruin, that I just read, um, because this is more of like the traditional gothic. Well, I would say the first one is more like seaside gothic. This one is more like plant gothic. <laughs> That makes sense. It's set like 12 years after the first book and we're following the youngest sister Verity and she basically is kind of kept in the family manor and is not really allowed to leave and then one day her oldest sister tells her that's actually because she can see ghosts and communicate with them and doesn't know that she's doing that and she gets this offer to go like paint a portrait of this duke's son and because she can see ghosts her sister like forbids her from going but she runs away anyways and when she's there she gets drawn into this like really weird manner where there's like a bunch of plants and things because the people here are known as the people of the petal and she quickly like develops feelings for their son but she like just really does not know what's going on in this manner and it gets wild and I really thoroughly enjoyed this one and I enjoyed House of Salt and Sorrows as well and I love it man and it is gothic. Here we have one that I feel like everyone is buzzing about and this is One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. I mean look at even just this little like these thingies are so gothic. Elspeth needs a monster. The monster might be her. The kingdom that they're in is Blunder which is an eerie mist locked kingdom. She needs more than luck to stay safe in this kingdom. She needs a monster. He's in her head and she calls him the nightmare. And then Elspeth meets a mysterious highwayman on the road and they kind of embark on this quest to cure the dark magic that is plaguing the kingdom together. And it says, a maiden must unleash the monster within to save her kingdom in this dark, lush, gothic fantasy debut. Need I say more? And then the last one that I'm going to talk about today I think should be a surprise to literally zero people that watch my channel. And then it's Belladonna by Adeline Grace. I've been talking about this book so much lately, especially because I just read the sequel, which was in my vlog I posted last week, if you would like to watch. Um, we follow Cigna, and she can see death, and the people around her tend to die. Um, she's passed from family to family, and she, finally she goes to Thorn Grove, where the mother recently passed away. The father is just, like, throwing all these parties because he doesn't know how to deal with his emotions. The daughter is falling ill from the same sickness that the mother had and the son is just trying to keep it all together. So because sickness can see death, she can also see ghosts and the ghost of the mom comes to her and is like, hey, like I was murdered. I need you to figure out like who killed me. 
and she then enters into an alliance with Death himself to figure out what is happening to this family and to kind of discover more about her own powers. Ugh, and it's just like it's got murder mystery, regency, gothic, like spooky manner setting and this is one of my all-time favorite books. I just love it so much. And I love the sequel too, which is really good because uh, you are always afraid with sequels, right? Let me know down below some of your favorite gothic fantasy recommendations. I'm sure I was not able to cover them all. There are so many that exist. Um, but I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you did. And have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.